Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. That is Jack. I'm Conrad, and this is the Footy Five. We are now mostly 25% of the way through the season. We've got United, Villa, uh, Man City, and Burnley with a game in hand, but the rest of the teams have all played their first nine matches. So we're going to take a look at the table, and we're going to bring in some of the expected points totals based on the expected goals, expected goals allowed, expected assists. Much smarter people than us make these formulas, and they determine pretty accurately how many points teams should have. Now, are they accurate? No, because football is a low-scoring sport. It's obviously susceptible to a lot of variance. Um, but it is very interesting nonetheless to see how teams stacked up last year and this year in terms of their points, goal difference, and expected points um, 12 months on. And I think one of the things we'll look on subsequent to this is going to be, all right, well, how did they end up at the end of the season? Mm -hmm. We won't look at that tonight. We'll focus specifically, and we'll put these larger on screen here, but basically what you have is 2020, 2021 on the left, 1920 on the right, a lot of numbers, a lot of names, mm -hmm. but – what we'll walk through six or seven different clubs and how they're doing this year versus what happened to them last year. Mm -hmm. And then we all know where they ended up last year. We don't yet know that. Obviously, you got Spurs at the top, Liverpool at the top last year. Some pretty clear differences, but we'll just walk through a few of these clubs. Top of the ticket here is Liverpool. The notable thing here is their goal difference. Last year, plus 14, now plus five, mm -hmm. largely due to the shellacking they took at the hands of Villa. But yeah. still, overperforming massively last year, 25 points against what it was expected to be 18. Mm -hmm. This year, a little bit tighter, 20 on 19. Yeah, exactly. I think that um, the goal difference is the big, big change for Liverpool. I mean, you can see five uh, goal difference in a match against Aston Villa compared to last year. That's a big difference um, through nine matches. They'll be happy considering that you had that awful loss, but you're still joint top and you're performing a bit above where you're expected to be. And this is more sustainable, I believe, for Liverpool to finish just about a point or just a small percentage amount above what you're expected to mathematically. Um, compared to last year, maybe they could have fallen down to earth a little bit. They eventually didn't. They got 99 points. They had a great season overall. But I think that Liverpool have proven that even in the face of injuries, even in the face of 7-2 shellackings, they have a lot of their mentality monsters for a reason, according to Klopp. So I think that's uh, this is one of the teams that are going to be the most positive that we're going to look at today. Yeah, I think so. Next up, Southampton. Another big jump. <laughs> Unbelievable. But positively. So last year, negative seven on goal difference, eight points, 13.11 expected points. So they were mm -hmm. underperforming significantly last year. Whereas this year, sitting with a four goal difference on 17 points, expecting 12 and a half. Mm -hmm. So where last year they were underperforming by five, this year they're outperforming by four and a half. Exactly. And we mentioned they went from bottom, or just above the relegation zone, to just below the top four. So something just a complete flip on its head. And that's just been a case of, yes, it's great. They're probably, nine again, point swing. a nine-point swing, but then you're probably going to figure out in the middle somewhere because that's just how these things work. Um, they have end up finishing relatively mid-table. I believe it was 12th last season. Um probably somewhere similar this year. So, yes, they're saying Southampton are having a great start, and maybe they are better than they were last year. The expected points disagrees. Now, is it right? Probably not. It's only nine match sample size. Um, but nonetheless, very interesting that they have had such a flip. in comparison. We said 12 months' time, but it's not actually been 12 months. Right. It was around October, late October, that we were nine matches through last year. But because of coronavirus, obviously much different season this year. So those numbers also, there's no home crowds. There's a lot more injuries as well. Well, Dan, no Danny Ings is going to bring that number. I think it's going to tighten here over the next couple of weeks. And a lot of these teams who are flying high above their expected are probably going to come down a little bit. Those below, you have to imagine, will come up. Unless you're Watford with 12.16 expected, and you still end up getting relegated. <laughs> oh, we were making fun of them last year, calling them Atford, because they didn't have a win. Yeah. And we're not really doing the same to Sheffield United this year. We'll yeah. talk to them about them in a minute, but... Uh, sitting rooted to the bottom with one point. Mm -hmm. Next up is Villa. Um, comparable. They go 15 points, 14 expected. Last year, 11, 11.75. 11 and a match in hand still. So that expected points number could still go up a little bit. I mean, you, you have to imagine unless they have the worst match in the history and you get zero expected points, which I'm not sure if that's even mathematically possible considering how football matches work. Um, but you see that they've made improvements year on year, and that's just because they made a lot of recruits. Better recruitment. And, and they have been able to bed them in. Oli Watkins making a great transition in. Jack Grealish continuing to be a borderline world-class player. Aston Villa have just proven that this is their level, where they finished around right about here last year. That's on not, the last that, day of the season. That's not where they're supposed to be. They're a lot higher. They're a mid-table side. I think that it is sustainable. I mean, look at that. 14 expected, 15 actual. That's very sustainable. Now, will that be good enough for seventh place long term? 
who's to say? But I think that Aston Villa should be very confident with, with where they're at, especially with the work of body from the last 12 months. Yeah, sitting seventh with a game in hand. Oh, yeah. you got to be very happy. And you're looking at potentially you could go level with Chelsea and Leicester and ahead of Leicester on goal difference. And if you have a great performance in your mat- match in hand, you could go maybe even ahead of Chelsea. But your that match in hand is against Manchester City. So beating Man City by four plus would be arguably as surprising as yeah. the 7-2 against Liverpool. It's a 1-0, 1-1 affair these days with, with City. Exactly. So the other half of, of Manchester, Man United, uh on par with where you'd expect them to be based on that you know negative one goal difference very inconsistent team and playing well in Europe then not playing well in Europe mm-hmm. playing well in the Premier League then not playing well in... last year way underperforming expected yes. to have 17 points at this stage they only had 10 Seven. So mm-hmm. I, again we don't know what to think of this Man United team other than they seem to be a rudderless ship. Exactly. Outside of uh, Liverpool, Man City, uh, Man City, and Chelsea last year, they were fourth best in terms of expected points. And they were floundering in 14th at this point last season um, in terms of match weeks. But this season, they're performing a bit better in the table. You have Bruno Fernandes. You have all these improvements. You've had 12 more months of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And yet, you're by the numbers, in terms of XG, XG against, you're performing worse. I, I think Manchester United, it's safe to say, have not improved significantly in terms of their league position. And yes, you have imagined hands. So if you go to 16 points and you're joint for seventh place, y- you shut up. Because if you go from 14th to seventh year on year, you know what? XG, XA doesn't doesn't matter if you're improving like that. But Manchester United, something to keep an eye on. We're trying to look at Bruno Fernandes in a bit more detail um, in the future because he's a guy who's just a an XG enigma. Right, he's a polarized, and he's a polarizing figure. And he's a polarizing figure. But United... As always, they're fascinating. Even when they're not at the height of their old glory days, they're still a phenomenal. Everybody's going to gonna talk about them. Biggest club in the world. One exactly. Of the biggest clubs in the world. Certainly in England. All right. Uh, so Man City, Oof. quite a fall off last year. Underperforming, even though um, you know the second place, nineteen twenty one point three three expected. Mm-hmm. This year, and look at the goal difference last year. Plus 20 this year, minus yeah. one. We I'm talked like Wolf Blitzer reading numbers on a television <laughs> screen. We talked, um, we talked last year a lot about how Man City were dropping points in matches that they shouldn't drop points in. Um, they dropped eight points at this point last year. Um, I can't do the math. 12, math, but 12 at this point this year. So it's even worse, and they still have the extra match where they could botch it even further against Aston Villa. Um, problems, I think, safe to say, for look Pep Guardiola. Look points difference. Exactly. 13, 21. We we. Talk about United performing so poorly. And they're underperforming at a very similar rate, one uh, one and a half lower and two and a half lower there. We really are Wolf Blitzer. We're just kind of flying around with the numbers. But, again, raw point numbers, even if you get the three points, are still five or, or four points under where you were at this point last year. And considering that Liverpool are still flying high, it's they need to improve. Simply put, they have a lot of flaws in their squad, and they do want to make a lot of improvements. There's rumors that Jack Grealish is wanted by Kevin De Bruyne, which that'd be a filthy amount of creation for a lack of finishing quality up top because you've had inconsistent healths of Aguero and Jesus. But it's fascinating, nonetheless, that they have taken such a step backwards, and they're going to need to really kick it into gear if they want to catch up with Liverpool, who, again, that 18.59x point figure... They are performing at about their level, even with all these injuries. So you see City are still below where they need to be to chase Liverpool, so they need to kick it up. And Liverpool, if what seems to be maintainable, City's aspirations are titles, and they're, they're pretty far away off of that right now. And we didn't talk about Spurs at all. They're overperforming by four points, roughly mm-hmm. you know, 20 to 16 and a quarter. So, again, we see this. We saw this in the first year with, with Mourinho at United where they were – very attacking, mm. playing, scoring a lot of goals, and then he resorted back to that same thing. Curious to see if that's what happens with United. I, I excuse be- me, with Spurs. I, but- be- I believe that he may have learned a bit from that because I think he's got a healthy balance of both because he had the 2-0 win against City where they sat back and they used their strengths. Yeah, we can be defensively solid and then beat him on the break. And they're also scoring a lot of goals against teams. Now, is it sustainable? We mentioned that they had the 3-3 lo- uh, draw against, felt like West, a loss yeah, against West, West Ham. Ham. So yeah, there's mess. still a lot of reasons to be ground to earth if you're if you're uh, Tottenham. Um, a lot of reasons to be ground to earth through Man City because there's been a lot of humbling results so far this season. But they could go on a 10-match streak where they don't lose. Who knows what's, what's going to happen with them. Uh, next up, look at Brighton. Um, we look at Brighton this year as underperforming. It's like they should be playing better than they are. But, well, yeah, they're underperforming their, ex- their expected points by four and a half. Mm-hmm. Last year, same spot, 
nearly the same same goal difference and the slightly closer same point total mm-hmm. so remarkably consistent actually year on year yeah. for for brighton last year finished on 41 points total which i mean you could extrapolate Sorry, that by by four yeah. that's about a bit better where you would want to be and that was in 15th place um just brighton i think have kind of found a niche not a niche spot but like a nice comfortable. A comfortable spot yeah. where they've got a good amount of talent i like a lot of the guys that they have i love ben white at center back neil mope i think they don't finish enough of their chances and that's their one of their biggest flaws and he's not an elite finisher i don't think um and they're really it's tough to say who's the most underrated side in the premier league and it's tough to call you underrated when you're 16th but they don't get talked about much because they don't really scream poor they don't really scream great they're kind of they're kind of just a bit average but they've found a way to get points and if they continue with the same trend as of last season they'll finish around about here in a very comfortable not really threatened relegation season Last up for this look is Sheffield United. Uh, we've talked about them a fair amount. They're one point expected 7.6. Exactly. Biggest, that's an enormous gap. Last year, 12 against 10 and a half, 10 and three quarters. We talk, they can't score, mm-hmm. right? They're minus 11 on the goal differential, differential last year, plus one. Mm-hmm. The only club that was worse differentially was City so mm-hmm. far this year, but they're in trouble. I mean, one point. Last year, Watford, who did get relevated, had four at the stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you mentioned at the beginning, we made fun of Watford, called him Atford, and Sheffield United. We like Sheffield United a lot. I think that they're a very likable club. Not saying we don't like Watford, but um, I think there's a, a very a feel-good atmosphere. They're a very unique club. Chris Wilder's just a great coach. Very Do unique tactics with, with yeah. the overlapping center backs, and it's just they're, they're, you, you want to root for them, and you don't want to believe that this is where they should lie, but even with if you matched your seven points that you're expected to have, you're still just barely out of the relegation zone. They have to step it up. And what does XG calculate? Well, it calculates the amount of chances you create, where they're from, and, and if you score them or not. Well, what do they not have? Their highest scores last year had six goals. They did not have a, a, a guy. Talismanic figure. No. And, you, and you talk about all these sides. Who who can you lean on if you're West Brom, if you're Fulham, if you're Burnley? Fulham, maybe Mitrovic. West Brom, you've got Diangana, you got... Pereira, you got guys that you can say maybe you can hang your hat on them to m- pull you out of some games. Sheffield United don't have that guy. We love Rion Brewster. We say it every time we talk about Sheffield United, we, like the qualifier. Yeah, we love Rion Brewster. We love that signing, but we don't love the signing right now. Not for that club right now. No. So again, twenty five percent of the season, we've seen that some of these sides right here: Newcastle, I think, in specific, Southampton, Brighton, Everton, Manchester United. They were really poor right now, at last year. And ended up improving to a point where they're not anywhere close to relegation, anywhere close to being an embarrassment of a, of a season for Manchester United. So, the, I guess the the overall takeaway is you still have many matches. Seventy five percent of the season. You, you still have thirty matches, twenty nine matches left, depending on who you are. So, it's good to learn from where you were last year, but still the car it, it's all in your hands. You may not feel like that every Sheffield United because you, you can't really score goals. But another take away from this score goals and you have a better chance just minus 11 is not going to get you anything. no that'll do it for us with our look at that first 25 percent of the league table uh xg style and against last year please do comment let us know what you think subscribe like us find us on the twitter at the 45 take care now